Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bring you now Bishop Isaac Walter Hurd. Amen. The man of God. Hallelujah. I thank God for him, that God may use him in a mighty way. Let's stand on our feet and receive him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just usher God in. We thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Oh, glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you that as your Holy Ghost showers us right now, each and every one of us, that you open Hallelujah. our hearts and our minds, Lord God. We thank you that our ears will receive what you have for each and every one of us, not just individually, but collectively, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that once again we get to dine and sup with you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we will truly walk out of here better than we walked in today, Lord God. We thank you for the grace to cover us, Lord God, but we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your undying love for each and every one of us, Lord. We thank you for a little bit of love. We thank you for a lot of love, Lord God. We thank you for patience unto day, Father God, Hallelujah. that you shower each and every one of us, Lord. We thank you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, that your word will be edifying for each and every one of us, Lord. And we will and we shall preach the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, family. Good afternoon. And as you turn your Bibles to Isaiah 40 and verse 31, I'll just give you some history on what for me personally is my favorite book in the Bible, Isaiah. And to confirm that, that book literally allowed me to call my firstborn, my son Isaiah, which I also named him. So it has even that much more significance to me, the book of Isaiah. And just to give you some brief history, because there's a saying that goes, in order for me to give you the text, there has to have a pretext. If there's no pretext, then there's no context. So I literally, literally, if I don't give you any context, then saints, I literally con you out of the text. So I want to give you some context in terms of what's going on with the prophet Isaiah. And... Like most prophets, you know, you really have to be bold to be a prophet because you have to speak what thus saith the Lord. And sometimes those things are harsh. And something my wife constantly says that a prophet that does not speak or a dead prophet that doesn't open his mouth is a dead prophet. So if God gives it to you, you must profess it. That's part of the gift. And one thing with Isaiah, he had to... Constantly, like most prophets, Isaiah had denounced the bad news and punishment for sin. But I don't want you to think every time you read the book of Isaiah, you know, that he's the bearer of bad news. Because actually, some of the greatest prophecies that came through, that were said through him, that were uttered in the, the uh, four books of the gospel, came from Isaiah. So, one of the most major ones to me, and I love how God is in terms of decency and in order. Even in his prophecies, he had order in it. And in Isaiah, he stated first that he stated about John the Baptist. When he talked about John the Baptist in Isaiah 40, when he said that there will be one in the wilderness crying that will come forth, that will set the groundwork for the Christ that is to come. And then later on, in Isaiah 53, he stated, but he also announced and described the coming of our Messiah, the very one that we sit here for today, the very one that we breathe for today, the very one that we live for today, the very life that we have is the one that he talked about significantly in chapter 53 where he announced the coming of the Messiah would be wounded for each and every one of our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities, but most of all, Jesus, but most of all, and by his stripes, we were healed. And in Jesus' early stages, in his early ministry, one of the most famous scriptures that he quoted in Isaiah 61, which he quoted in Luke 4, and somebody turn with me to Luke 4, verse 18 and 19, which was one of the most powerful scriptures that he stated. Jesus the Christ, 
which actually came from the book of Isaiah. Read it? Yes, please. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to, to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set out liberty that them that are bruised, to preach the acceptance, acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. The, one of the little reasons why the Christ was actually here, that actually he used from the book of Isaiah. He was actually one of those prophets for 60 years. His prophetic ministry was for 60 years, longer than a lot of us today even live. So I just want you to understand some of the context of what's going on in terms of the book of Isaiah. So we'll go to the, 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 the main text, which is Isaiah 40 and verse 31, and that's where we'll start today. And I'll read that to you. But once everybody have it, just say amen. So amen. 40, verse 31. Verse 31. Amen. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Very, this is a very popular passage that we have read and have heard and that we use through our waiting process, through our patience process. So this is not unfamiliar to us. But today the Holy Ghost has given me something to talk about specifically when it comes on the spirit of waiting, of being able to renew, to be able to mount up. So if there's a word that I'll leave with you today, it's either eagles or chicken. I say it again, eagles or chicken. You choose. You can either scratch with the chickens or you can soar with the eagles. Amen. I'll tell you once again, just to make sure you got this, and this is how the Holy Ghost gave it to me. Eagles or chickens, you choose. You can either scratch with the chickens or you can soar with the eagles. Amen. And I'll just go over that once again. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. And as I was reading this, I'm saying, Lord, okay, I'm learning now in the Bible when it says therefore. When you ever see the word therefore in the Bible, it's for us to dig and find out what it's there for. So as I read this and I asked God, what was significant about putting the ego in this? When we know the king of the jungle is the lion, as we say, the lion of Judah, and even in the insect atmosphere when he talked about the ants. So I was curious, why did he use the eagles? What was significant about the eagles in this in terms of being able to endure, to be able to mount up, to be able to renew their strength? And as I did some digging and did some history, um, about the eagles, what I found out was between the ages of 30 and 50 for eagles, they'll fly up to a cliff. And specifically why they'll do that, because somewhere in that age limit, what happens is their feathers start to overgrow. And they can't fly anymore. So what they have to do in the cliff is to pluck out their feathers. Yeah, and if any of y'all ever been to a nail salon, this ain't like getting your eyebrows plucked. This is a far greater pain, I, I assure you. So as he has to pluck out his feathers, and at that time too, his, beaks, his beak overgrows. So he has to literally take his beak and smash it against the rock and break that. So now you're talking about his feathers is gone. One of, one of his most utilized tools for his weapon is his beak. That's going down. So now you, he's defenseless. It cries out and it waits for the time of renewal. Now, saints, this is where we play the part in. This is where we as the church play a major part and coincide in comparison and contrast also to how the eagles do it. So other eagles hear its cry and it comes to its aid, as we should as saints when we hear saints crying out, somebody might need a ride, somebody might need their rent paid, 
Whatever we might need to help, we better keep in tune to our saints the same way the eagles keep in tune with this one that had to pluck his feathers and break his, his, his beak. Scaring off predators. The purpose that they're there, they fly to scare off the predators and they bring food to their incapitated friend. As the word would say, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. Like it happens to eagles, God makes us to go through harsh trials of endurance and change. And even though this is the book of Isaiah, we must understand, saints, that we all will have a Daniel experience. We will all get pushed in the fire, and we will all have to lay in the lion's den one day in our lives. And some of us will have many of those experiences. But we will mount up as wings as eagles. We must have a surety. First Peter, and I love this. I was talking with my wife, and before I even say that, I'll read First Peter to you just so you can catch it. First Peter 4 and 12 stated, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. But when Peter started this, he said, Beloved. And I was taking a walk with my wife, and it was funny because we kind of overwalked too far, and then we, like, we, like, we want somebody to take us back. But we made it, and I thank God for that, that we endured the terrain and we actually walked back. But in part of the conversation we had, she was talking about how she would be in the room, and the mother probably would call her with that sweet voice, Asia. And you think everything's okay. You know, mommy called you with a sweet voice. You're like, okay. So now she gets in the room, and she's like, change the channel. Mom is already in the room, and she's going to call you out of her room with the sweet voice to come change her channel. Knowing mommy is right there. But I say that to say how Peter started this off by saying, Beloved, with that calm, sweet, passionate voice, Beloved. But then on top of that, he comes behind it and hits you with it. Think it not strange concerning fiery trials. Yes, we will have trials in our lives, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. Hmm. Understand, saints, this is necessary to shape our Christian character and faith. I didn't say it, the book said it. It is necessary to strengthen our and shape our Christian 